Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Well, we're talking about the operative power of God's word. Hallelujah. I want to begin reading from Hebrews, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> I'm reading to you from verse number 12. <clears throat> he says, For the word of God is quick. I'm reading King James Version first. For the word of God is quick. That means living, all right? Or alive. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, praise God, of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He says the word of God is quick and powerful. Now that's a little blind to us. But I want to, I want to read it to you from the Amplified Version. And here's where we're picking our title from. Listen to it. It says, for the word that God speaks, that is the word of God, is alive and full of power. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He says the word that God speaks is alive. Kevin, the word of God is alive. It's not dead. He says it is alive and full of power. Making it active. Operative. Energizing. And effective. What a description for the word of God. He says, God's word is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. In Psalm 107, when you read from verse 20, <clears throat> after he told us fools were there, iniquity are afflicted, they... They abhor all manner of meat. They draw nigh to the gates of, of, of hell, death. And then it says, they cry in their trouble unto God. And he hears them. In verse 20, Psalm 107, he says, he sent his word. God sent his word to those who cried out for help. To those who cried out for deliverance. Those who cried out for God's intervention in their lives. He says, he sent his words and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He says, God sent his word. It was the word of God that was sent to them. And the word of God healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word that God sent. Now hear me. Just because somebody's preaching doesn't mean he's giving you the word of God. Just because he's written out of the book, out of the Bible... And analyzing the scriptures doesn't mean that you are receiving from him the word of God. We have to understand what is the word of God. There's got to be a clear definition of the word of God. What is the word of God? Somebody said, well, I was in church Sunday morning. And so... Um, what was it? What happened there? Yeah, well, we were there. We listened to the Word of God. What is the Word of God? Someone tells you, I want to share the Word of God with you. What is the Word of God? How do you know the Word of God? Firstly, we just read something. He says, the Word of God is living and active. It is alive. It is full of power. Making it active. Operative, energizing, and effective. And of course, it doesn't become active, operative, energizing, and effective just because the man is punching the air and shouting at the top of his voice. God's word produces results. It works. 
It will change a poor man's position. Glory to God. If the word of God comes to a man that is poor, it will make him rich. Hey, hey, you've got to follow me on this. Just listen, because I'm going to show it to you from the word of God. If a sick man receives the word of God, it will make him well. Someone says, well, will it happen every time? Yeah! Every time you receive the word of God, it will do something in you. It is active, operative, energizing, and effective. One thing it didn't mention is exciting. Doesn't have to make you clap. Doesn't have to make you shout. But you will be energized. Hallelujah. I said it will change your circumstances. <laughs> God's word is God. You know, some years ago, some years ago, I had some of these um, old Christians and um, they were trying to distinguish between the teaching ministry and the evangelistic ministry. And I was listening to them as they went on with their exegesis. So they said, um, the teacher talks slowly and in a, analyzes. You know, he explains and uh, the preaching evangelist goes like, hoo, 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 hoo. So I thought to myself, that means I'll fail in either of them. Because I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't be so slow when I got excited with God's word. And I didn't have to make my hand the way they said the hand had to go. On the other hand, I... Praise God for those who can really shout. You know, shout good. But I, I can't shout that much. So, I thought, okay, for either one of them, I just don't make it. They said, well, the teaching ministry doesn't have miracles. The preaching and evangelistic ministry commands the miraculous. In a way, the more I studied the Bible, the more I found out they were trying to make up for their spiritual bankruptcy. They were trying to make up. Because I found out no one with the miraculous ever defined it that way. That was something I found out. I tried to find out who was talking to me. Who was giving me this revelation. I found nobody who walked in the realm of the supernatural ever gave such definitions. But those without it always did. So I decided the best place to go was the Bible. Let me find out. What does the Bible say a teacher ought to be? Who is the example of a teacher. What was he like? Because one of the ministerial offices to which I am called is to teach. So I have to be interested in knowing what it is. But you know, it's got nothing to do with the definitions. It's got to do with the spirit at work in you. Because when, when God calls you into any office, the Holy Spirit will manifest and operate that office in you. Doesn't matter what others call it, it will surely be what God has chosen it to be. Human definitions don't mean anything. Hey, come on. Somebody once said to me, um, from the look of things, you cannot be a pastor. Well, that's many years ago. And he, he said he was called to be a pastor anyway. But I don't, I, I don't know if he thinks the same thing now. 
Because from the day he said it, I've been pastoring ever since. If I walked out of here today and went into Badagri and decided to stay there, another church would just start and just become as big as this and just be as effective. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by my spirit saith the Lord. It's what God calls it that really matters. It's what God says it is. The teaching ministry, if it is from God, must have the supernatural. The evangelistic ministry, if it is from God, must have the supernatural. Any ministry that is from God can only have supernatural credentials. Hey, brother, it's not enough for you to tell me you're a Christian, you're a pastor, you're a preacher, you're a teacher, you're an apostle or a prophet or anything. Where are your credentials? We've come to a point in Christendom where we need accreditation from men and organizations. Such that if a band of Christians there don't agree that you are a Christian, then you become persona non grata. It's not supposed to be that way. Paul said that when he came, when he and Barnabas came to the apostles, the apostles listened to them and compared the reports that they had heard about them. And then he said, when they saw that he which worked in Peter effectively to those who were of the circumcision worked also in us to those who were of the uncircumcision, then they gave us the right hand of fellowship. When they saw that the God that worked in Peter effectively, that means under the anointing, producing supernatural results. He said, we explained to them, we shared with them the great things, the miracles that God had performed among the Gentiles where we went to preach. And they had heard about us. So we came to share with them the revelations, God's word that had been given to us. He said, when they found out how God worked effectively in us, as he did with Peter, they gave us the right hand of fellowship. That was it. Then he said to all the other guys around and say, Hey, what do you think about what do you think about what do you think about Paul? You think he's one of us? Well, I don't like the guy. Okay, forget him. No, no, no. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. We should never allow what happened in the dark ages come back. See? Where the church got to the point where they the annihilated the, the supernatural and decided that the state should have the power to decide what should be done in the churches. That the state should have regulatory powers over the church. To decide who could preach publicly and who couldn't. When, when the atheists, the communists took over Russia and China, that's what they did. There were churches there appointed by the, by the states. Patriarch David. Patriarch Choskov. Heavily dressed in full regalia, thinking that the more dressed he was, the more Holy Ghost he had. But life shouldn't be that way. Well, let me tell you, the Bible says a quick work will the Lord do. 
and he will cut it short in righteousness. The world hasn't seen anything yet. There are going to be supernatural signs and miracles like the world has never seen before. I mean, we are dealing with a world that is so scientific in their thinking, and the only way we can command their attention is by doing what they cannot do. That's the only way. When we do what they cannot do, then we will come to the point, because we are almost there now. Almost there now. Many of these so-called educated people in the great industrialized nations are fiddling now, trying their hands in the supernatural trying their hands in magical arts and, 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 and witchcraft. Why are they doing it? Because they find there's something beyond science. And the more they dabble into the supernatural, the more the organized church says, you don't need the miraculous. That we should just read from the Bible. What are you talking about? You hold one book called the Bible, another man holds another one called the Quran, or what the, 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 the communists believe, or what the, 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 the Shintoists believe, or what the, the Buddhists believe, whatever. Which one is from God? Come on, talk to me. He said, well, my black Bible, they're not all black nowadays. I got a red one here. And they can produce a black one too. And so you put all the books called the divine revelation. The divine, the grail messengers come out with another one. And they say it's divine. The Baha'i faith comes with another one. And they say it's divine. Which one is from God? How are we going to know? Pharaoh called his magicians and says, bring out your rods, cast them down before Moses. Moses' rod had turned into a shepherd. They brought their rods, cast them down. They all turned into shepherds. The only way to know whose God was God, hallelujah, is when Moses' serpent swallowed the rest of them up. Hallelujah. Wasn't a theoretical analysis of um, who was who and how that the God of Abraham, he didn't have to tell no stories. I said, we are there now. There's got to be a proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I can understand some folks, you know, we, they say, well, we believe in miracles. Miracles are real. Then they go back to the Bible days and say, Jesus performed miracles. Peter performed miracles. So we believe in miracles. Hey, this is the 21st century. Are there no miracles today? Show me 21st century miracles then I know your God is alive in the 21st century. Don't talk about only Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and so on and so forth, and stop in the book of Jude. What about today? He didn't say to Moses, I was. He said, I am. It's easy for us to say, well, what? They say, yes, we believe in miracles. Reinhard Bonnke performs miracles. Oh, come on here. You talk about Reinhard Bonnke. What about here? If it takes a German or an American to come and show you God, okay, when they go back, do they go away with the God? You know, you know what the trouble is. When people have a hard time believing the truth, they want to sell their own belief to everybody else. You know, some people think we are just starting. They think we, we just came, you know, like I know there are many who have said that uh, that Pastor Chris, you know, he just came from America. Somebody just gave him some money. He just came from America, started a church. And brother, I've been on this. I've been here a long time. I've been born again for almost 30 years of my life. Are you hearing me? And I've been a minister for more than 20 years. In other words, 
I'm not just getting excited about something. It's something I've tested, proved, and seen it work. Producing results. Hallelujah. Well, come on, let's go back to it. Are you still there? I said, the Word of God produces results. If it is the Word of God, it will do something. The only reason God's Word doesn't work is when the man who receives the Word of God fails to acknowledge it. The Bible says when Jesus went to his hometown of Nazareth, he could not perform mighty works because of their unbelief. Unbelief will short circuit the power of God in your life. You know, some people say, well, if your God prove it to me. He doesn't have to because he already proved something. If you are there, talk now. I give you three minutes to talk. If you don't talk, then you are not alive. One. Then they count three. Uh -huh, I said it. You, who do you think he is? You, one man, out of more than four billion people on the face of the earth, challenging God? Who are you? Something wrong with your mind. He should show up if he's gone. If he showed up. You know what he says? He says, anybody who falls on the stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall descend, it shall grind him to powder. He says, if you... <laughs> God is too big. Don't try to challenge him. He's too big. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. He can never be intimidated. Never. He can never be intimidated. Hey, come on. Verse 12, one more time. For the Word of God is living and active. That's in the NIV, I believe. New International Version. It says it's living and active. All right. The Word of God is quick and powerful, King James. Quick, living and active, full of power, he says. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. The Word is. Now, can I show you a principle in the Word of God? Will you turn to St. Matthew's Gospel for a moment? St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 13. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 10. <clears throat> and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus' disciples came to him. They said, Why are you talking to the people in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you. Hey, hey, this is beautiful. Don't miss this line now. Make sure you get it. Mark it in the Bible. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For example, back in the dark ages, a certain things that they did, they decided that God's people didn't need the revelation of the word of God. Because they said, Hey, you're not supposed to understand. Only those that are trained in the theological schools can understand the Word of God. If you haven't gone to the theological seminary, you cannot understand the Bible. It is for the DDDs and the professors of theology. And the people said, Amen. They said, All right, just tell us whatever God tells you. That was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there is a difference. Look at what Jesus said here. Oh, glory to God. He says, it is given unto you to know. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's your right to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It belongs to you. You can understand. You can receive it. It's yours. Oh, 
Oh, glory, 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 glory. To them of the world, it is not given. Now, verse 12. We're going somewhere, right? Hello? Hmm. Tell somebody close to you, we're going somewhere. Sure. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. It's talking about God's word. The revelations of God's word. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because... Mm, notice this now. Notice it. Notice what he says and what he does not say. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. You remember that saying? The more you look, the less you see. He says, they seeing see not. And hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. The more they listen, the less they hear. And they don't understand. Have you seen some folks like that? All the time they say, well, I don't understand what he's talking about. I don't understand. They read the Bible, I don't understand. You share the word of God with them, I don't understand. Hey, come on. He says, they see and see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Come on. Verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. That's Isaiah in the Old Testament. He says in their lives a prophecy of Isaiah has been fulfilled in their lives. Now, I'm going to read that what Jesus said here. Then I'll go to that prophecy of Isaiah that has been fulfilled in the lives of such people. May the good word of God be fulfilled in your life. Amen. For there is a word of judgment from God. And it is fulfilled in the lives of some. Now he says about these people. He says, in them who do not understand. In those to whom I speak in parables. It's fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Now he says here. Which saith. He quotes that, that prophecy. Which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is waxed gross. They have become proud. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Can you see it's their responsibility? They have closed. Lest at any time, they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and shall understand with their heart and shall be converted and I shall heal them. Now stop for a moment. I'm going to explain this to you. It's one of the most powerful portions of the New Testament. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. Now, he's quoting the prophet Isaiah. And I want us to go to the original where the man himself said it. Are you ready? Show you're ready? Show you're ready? Okay, book of Isaiah, chapter number 6. <clears throat> you know, there are people, they say, well, we don't know what is right anymore. We don't know what. How can you not know what is right? What have you become? You remember Jesus taught one time, when you studied the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel, the Bible says Jesus was teaching. And he had a multitude of disciples and they were listening to him as he taught. Then he made certain statements and some of them got offended. Some of the disciples, there was a multitude of disciples. Now listen to him. The Bible says that they got offended and they left. Only the twelve remained with him. They got angry and said, who can hear this? Nonsense. Then Jesus turned to his twelve. said, everybody's gone. Aren't you leaving? 
Then Peter spoke for the rest of them. He said, Master, to whom shall we go? You're the one with the message of eternal life. Why? Because he had been listening to everybody else. And they don't have the right stuff. Their word didn't give life. He said, Master, why, why are we going anywhere else? Your word has life. Hallelujah. All right, Isaiah chapter number 6. Now I want to read to you from verse... Now, all right, why don't I take it from verse 8 so you can get it in the right context. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Are you hearing that? He said, Go tell them, Hear, but don't understand. So they're there. Mm -hmm. Come on, tell us again. Then you tell them again. And they say, we don't understand you. You want to hear again? Yep. Tell us. And then he tells them again. They say, we still don't understand. Or they will give a different interpretation. Like he said, destroy this body. And in three days. Because he used the word temple. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up. They say, it took many years for our fathers to build this temple. And are you going to build it up in three days? And they went straight to the Romans to kill him. Then he said, Hello, hello, the master back tonight. He said, He's calling for Elijah. They were dull of hearing. He said, Hear, but don't understand. That's really it. And he said, go tell these people, verse 9, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. You see, but you can't follow it. Like some people see, a miracle is taking place right before their very eyes. And they say, hmm, mm hmm, hmm. Somebody says, it's a fake. The other one says, it's magic. You see them? They cannot understand. Yet in the midst of all that, there's another one who sees that and he says, Dear Jesus, thank you. In those other guys is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. He said, See, but don't perceive. Hear, but don't understand. It's not for you. Brothers and sisters, don't feel bad. When you share your testimony or when you share the word of God and somebody says nonsense. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. That's what Jesus said. Don't feel bad. You just, smile. just be thankful that that prophecy was not fulfilled in your life. When you see people who don't believe, be grateful to God that you were able to believe. Because you would have been condemned like the rest of them. Now listen, uh, the man's trying to get our money. All these preachers, it's business, so why don't you join the business? <laughs> join it and see how profitable it is. Join it. After when you hear there's tire business that is moving, you go and start selling tires. You hear that there's a food business, you start with your restaurant. Anything. So, this is another one. Join too. <laughs> business is business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read it. Verse 10. Make the prophecy still going on. You know, he said, hey, come on, let's read it again from verse, from verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Verse ah, yeah, I was there, I saw it, yeah. He said, See indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat. Get them to become proud. You remember what Jesus said, Their heart is wax gross. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest, huh, huh, lest, lest 
He said, don't let them understand. Don't let them perceive. Let them be proud. Lest. Come here. Lest they see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And understand with their hearts. And convert. And be healed. What's he saying? That every time you hear in your heart. Every time you see. Glory to God. Glory to God. You still here? Yeah. All right, can we read again? From Isaiah chapter number 6. Hmm. He says, from verse 9. And he said, go and tell these people. What was the message? He said, tell them, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Hear, but don't understand. See, but don't perceive. What does it mean to see and not perceive? It means you're looking at something, but you cannot see the real truth behind it. So you're looking but not seeing. So you look at it and say, well, I was there, I heard it, I saw it. But it didn't change you. Which means you really didn't hear. You heard from the outward ears, but spiritually, come on, look at, look at what happened to you. He said in verse 10, make the heart of these people fat. Make them proud. Make them feel too big to be bamboozled by anybody. Hey, come on, nobody's going to mess me up. I know who I am. Nobody's going to brainwash me. Yeah, you cannot be deceived, but you have been deceived. Listen, it takes the Holy Spirit to lead you into salvation. It takes the Holy Spirit. See, you know, sometimes I ask myself questions. I say, why do I believe all these things that I believe? And how come some other fellow who also says he believes in Jesus cannot see these things. I love to go into the Bible because that's the final habitat. So I go again into the Bible and I study. It's so simple. So consistent with a godly life. Are you hearing me? So consistent with a godly life. I cannot... Hey, let me give you an example. Several years ago, there was a certain minister... And uh, he, he broke out of a certain church. And he said God asked him to do it. So he broke out of that church and started another church. And some of the leaders, you know, they, 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 they just split the church right in the middle. So some of them went with him, some others remained there. So he began this new church. And in this new church... <laughs> he told them after they had started and uh, they believed that he was the very voice of God so one day he came and he said that God had asked him to marry seven wives relax and when he told them that they agreed with him because he said God told him told him to marry seven wives and he married the seven wives and the church celebrated he was the only one allowed to marry seven wives. For whatever reason he gave them. So he married the seven wives. And the church continued. Several years after, he came again and said, The Lord has spoken to me. And has said that I should put away these seven wives and get another seven wives. Well, at this point, the church split again. Some held on with him. Some said, this is impossible. But hey, come to think of it. Why did that first set that stayed with him, why did they stay? Didn't see anything wrong with marrying seven wives. Solomon had 1,000 of them. 700 wives, 300 concubines. So what's wrong with seven? If I 
pastor wants to have seven wives, give them to him. So they gave him the seven wives. Hey, come on. Come on. What does the scripture say? That the spiritual responsibility of a minister is such that he cannot do with more than one. He didn't say he has sinned if he has more than one. But he lets him know that he cannot fulfill the purpose of God with more than one wife. Which means, if he comes to say, God has said, marry seven, it means that God has taken away spiritual responsibilities from him. They should have known. I mean, that was simple enough. God was actually saying, if God ever spoke to him, that message should have been clearly interpreted. It would have meant, God is saying, guy, you go do whatever you want. I don't have any job for you. Finish. And why would you want to stay under a minister whom God has said he doesn't have any job for him? Why would you be there? See, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy for us to think that we cannot be deceived. And then we're deceived right there. The only way you can stay out of the deception of this hour is to stick to God and his word. Not what somebody says is the word, but the word in truth, in reality. Let me say this. The fact that the minister performs miracles does not mean that he's pleasing God. How many of you agree with that? You agree with that? But Jesus said it is more difficult for a minister who truly works in the supernatural to speak evil of him or to go the wrong way. It is more difficult, he says. And I can explain to you why it is more difficult. It is easier for a man of God or a man who says he's of God and does not have the supernatural to go the wrong way. It is easier. And I want to tell you why. To consistently have the supernatural in your life, you must be con consistently submissive to the Holy Ghost. You must be prayerful. You must be humble. You must stick to God's word. Because you know it is not by your power. So that causes you, the more you see the miracles, and the more submissive you are, the more miracles you're going to see. And that means that you will not want to get out from the realm of God's spirit and guidance in your life. You see why it is easier for such a man to walk in the light of God than the one who doesn't have it. I mean, you don't have to. Hey, how many of you know you don't need to pray much to come and read something? If you want a revelation from heaven, you have to be submissive to the Holy Ghost. But if you're going to put several books together and analyze them on Sunday morning, why do you have to pray? Go into your library, put down the books and start reading. Anybody can do that. And then come out. If you have a gift of gap, you can talk. Can you see it? So in your life, we are in an age. Huh. Listen. The hour is a hot hour in the kingdom right now. Are you hearing me? I said it's a hot hour in the kingdom of God right now. Such that there is war in the realm of the spirit. What is the war? It's not just, de we're not talking about demons fighting angels, no. We're talking about war in the realm of the spirit. Where there is a struggle for the souls of men. To pull them out. And there's another struggle for the souls of men. To bring them in. It's an hour of harvest. Yet, Jesus said, along with that hour of harvest, there shall be a great falling away. Many will fall away from the faith because of the deception of the hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, glory to God. So, in verse 10, he says, make the heart of these people fat. Make them proud. Too proud to listen. Too proud to hear anything. He said, make them proud. Make their heart proud. Swell them up. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes. 
and hear with their ears, lest they see with their eyes. Shut their eyes so they shouldn't see. Shut their ears so they shouldn't hear. He says, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and convert and be healed. He's saying, hey, come on, make them proud. Close up their ears, close up their eyes. Don't let them understand because if they see, if they see with their eyes, if they hear with their ears, if they understand with their hearts, they will convert. In other words, they will be changed. And they will be healed. So he says, so don't let them see. Don't let them hear. Don't let them understand. So that they will not be converted. And so that they will not be healed. Can you see why a man can walk into a meeting like that? And in his pride, listen to everything that's going on. And he's sick and dying. And he goes back the same way he came. Saying nothing was real. They hadn't seen a miracle. They just pretended. They staged, managed everything. Everybody that went up there to give a testimony was just, he was pretending. It wasn't true. So he's going back the same way he came. And he thinks he's wise. His heart has been made fat. He says, lest they see, lest they hear, lest they understand and convert and be healed. Why did he say that? Because of their iniquities. So he says, who will go? Isaiah said, hear my eyes, send me. He said, all right, you go. He said, go close up their ears. Close up their eyes. Shut up their understanding. He said, because when the word of God is revealed and released, God's word goes forth. Oh, hallelujah. Why did God talk like this? Because prior to this time, he already released the word of healing. And he says, my word shall not return unto me void. It shall prosper according to what I said it. He says, it cannot return void. The word of salvation, the word of healing has been given forth. If anybody gets a hold of it, he will be saved. If anybody gets a hold of it, he will be healed. So what am I going to do? I can't change the word from healing people. It's got to heal. It must accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. Therefore, to stop those people from receiving the blessing while they are living in sin, he says, shut up their ears, shut up their hearts, shut up all their eyes that they should not see or hear or understand because if they do they will convert and be healed can you see it i said the word of god produces results it is living and active it's alive hallelujah the bible says it is full of power making it active wow it is operative it is energizing it is effective. Oh, glory. Doesn't matter what you're going through. If you will hear the word of God, it will produce results. He says it will convert. Now, well, oh boy, you've got to understand when Jesus takes this scripture and then reanalyzes it for us and presents it to us, as we studied in 13 chapters in Matthew's Gospel. You can see it also in uh, St. John's Gospel. Now, and Paul also said the same thing in the 28th chapter book of Acts. Now, you understand that he's dealing with the converting power of the Word of God. Which means, the Word of God is a converter. Are you hearing me? When you hear it, it will change your situation. It will change your life. It will start from you. Well, it will change you and change your position. I said if you were poor, it will change your position. If you were sick, it will change your position. It will change your body. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can your mind be renewed? When you take the word of God into you, he says, as we gaze at the word of God, we are metamorphosed. We are changed. Hallelujah. We are transfigured. And then he tells us how? From glory to glory. From glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You want to change in your life? You don't have to cry. You want to change in your life? You want to change in your situation? Your circumstances? Turn to the Word. It's got converting power. Are you hearing me? It will turn you around. Glory to God. You want to change? Set it on your marriage. 
It will change your marriage. It will change your children. It will change your home. It will change your finances. Are you hearing me? The Word of God is living and active. It doesn't fail. You can depend on it. Take it. It's a gift to man. Take it. Lift it. Receive it into you. And declare against hope. I believe in hope. Take God's words. Like Abraham the Bible says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. My God supplies every need of mine according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I refuse to be poor because I have been made rich in Christ Jesus. I will not lack for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Goodness and mercy follows me. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Then watch your life grow. Those who are seeing you now, give them another two months. Be consistent on the word of God. Hallelujah. Be consistent on the word of God. See the changes. He says, as we look, we are changed. That means beholding the glory of God in the mirror. Beholding it, seeing it. Until you see it, you cannot become. You have to see it. Speak in other tongues. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Open your mouth and pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pour out your heart before God. Montaka bayandelege so prashata. Hey, na bashenda la bakundra de kasati. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. God is hearing your prayer. God is hearing your prayer. God is hearing your prayer. It's time to pray. God is hearing you now. It's time to pray. The Father is hearing you now. The Father is hearing your prayer. He's hearing your prayer. He's hearing your prayer. He's hearing your prayer. Hearing your prayer. This is the time. This is the time. It's an hour to pray now. Pray now. Receive God's answer today. Pray now. Pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. This is the time. God is hearing your prayer. He's hearing your prayer. 
There is an answer for your prayer today. There is an answer for your prayer today. Whatever it is, whatever is in your heart to tell the Lord, tell Him now. Anything in your heart that you want to tell God, tell Him now. This is the time. This is the time. Whatever you want to tell Him, tell Him now. He's hearing you. He's hearing you. This is the time. As you tell him what you need, begin to thank him for the answer. 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 You are receiving answers to your prayer. Miracles are happening right now. You are receiving answers to your prayer. Miracles are happening right now. Chains are being destroyed right now. People are receiving answers right now. You are receiving answers right now. You are moving forward in your life. You are making progress in your life. Glory to his name forever. Yes, it is done. 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 Begin to praise him for it. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. It is done. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are in a year of praise and greater glory. Greater glory. Greater glory. That's what the Lord told us at the beginning of this year. He said 2002 for you is a year of praise and greater glory hallelujah hallelujah tell seven people this is my year of praise and greater glory seven people And greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory this is my year of praise and greater glory 